but it can be extended depending on of users interest um, so this webinar will be recorded and all the uh, materials including the YouTube links and the links where you can download your um, materials will be provided uh, at the end of this webinar uh, through an email or I can provide you a link in the chart window so you can go ahead and uh, download that stuff as soon as they are ready uh, if you have any questions during the seminar, you can keep keep on typing in the chat box and uh, the speakers, when they have uh, time, they, they will get back to you. They will answer as soon as they can. Uh, if they can't, if we cannot answer all the questions within the allotted time, we will uh, get back to you through an email or, uh, or ask forum. You can always uh, use the ask forum. So, uh, so I have created so if you're a fan of Twitter, just like me, so I have created uh, a hashtag ifgentix1 and you can tweet it at the Twitter handle cybers.org. Uh, it is uh, currently available. Uh, and uh, the second webinar uh, will be followed shortly in, in seven days. So if you're interested in that, you can join that. The links are provided in the uh, in the presentation slide, uh, and also I'll be uh, sending you an email with uh, with all the details uh, shortly after the presentation. Okay, so without further ado, um, let's get started. So the first speaker for today's webinar is Joan Song. Joan is a research associate at uh, Texas Advanced Computing Center. She graduated from University of Cambridge, UK in 2010, uh, where she worked with uh, structural bioinformatics. Uh, she has vast experience working in the fields of network biology and plant biology, and her, her current interests are plant epigenetics, and she is a lead bioinformatician in two NSF-funded uh, plant genome research projects. So, Joan, if you want to go ahead and uh, share your screen, uh, let me unshare. Okay. All right, can everybody see my slide? Yes. Um, first of all, thank you, Upendra, for the nice introduction. Um, um, as Upendra said, my name is Jawan Song. I'm a research associate at Texas Advanced Computing Center. And today I'm going to talk about some of the ways you can carry out your bisulfide sequence analysis using Cyber's discovery environment. So before I get into the detail of the actual pipeline, I'd like to discuss um, what is bisulfide sequencing. So we know from uh, literatures that epigenetic regulation is critical for eukaryotic development processes. So, and by epigenetics, I mean um, changes of DNA um, structure beyond the sequence itself. Um, and the dysregulation of epigenetic regulations is of often related to genetic um, disorders such as cancer and fragile X syndrome, which is related to autism. So there's different types of epigenetic changes um, in which one is post-translational. So this would include histone modifications, um, and also methylation of cytosines or nucleotide in DNA. So this figure is actually shown in the figure A here. So this is the addition of methyl group in cytosine, um, carbon five. And uh, you can see um, the diagram that shows um, methylations of DNA. So how can you actually detect um, DNA methylation? Um, DNA methylation, before I get into that, um, is one of the first to be discovered um, for all of the epigenetic changes. And DNA methylation can be detected using um, bisulfide conversion of DNA. 
So um, there's many different ways to do this, but with the advancement of next generation sequencing, um, bisulfite sequencing is the one of the most high resolution technique to actually detect DNA methylation. So figure C shows some of the ways DNA methylation can affect um, downstream gene um, regulation. So normal gene would have um, a gene expression, whereas methylcytosine would um, actually inhibit uh, downstream gene expression. So how is bisulfite sequencing done? Um, on top, you have this um, DNA sequence. And um, using bisulfite conversion, all the unmethylated cytosine are converted to uracil, and methylated cytosine remains cytosine. And using PCR amplification, those uracils is converted to thymidine, and um, you can map them onto the reference genome to detect um, which of the cytosine sites have been methylated or not. So as I said, um, there has been um, advancement in next generation sequencing, and there has been growing interest in uh, finding the patterns of DNA methylation. Um, so as, as that um, effect, we have a number of tools that are available for use. Um, this figure is taken from omicstools.com, which actually have a nice um, catalog of all the genomics and non-genomic um, bioinformatics tools. So if you go into bisulfite sequencing category, you can already see there's a lot of um, different tools that are available. For example, for read alignment, there's already 33 tool, different tools to do this. And um, so there's uh, tools ranging from experimental design to read simulation. So um, if you're interested, please um, take a look at this site and see what um, is most useful to you. Um, we also want to talk about some of the common pipelines that's used for bisulfite sequence analysis. So um, commonly, you would start from a raw sequence data, either from your sequencer or from public databases, such as SRA. Um, those reads are often um, tagged with adapter sequences, so you want to do some kind of quality control um, using tools like Trim Galore um, to trim any adapters and do a QC on the reads to identify whether the reads are in good shape or not. Um, after you get the output from these quality control tools, um, in which um, the outputs are also in a format of FASTQ, um, you want to map them onto a reference genome. Um, there's a lot of aligners um, that's uh, available uh, for use, as I've shown in the previous slide. Some of the most uh, popular ones are Bismarck, BSMAP, and GSNAP, as we are going to talk about today. Um, and you use these tools to map your sequencing reads onto a reference genome and create uh, a line file in the format of BAM file or SAM file. And um, using these tools, um, what you want to do for DNA methylation is to extract um, how each cytosines are methylated. So for these, you can use tools which are often um, available through the aligners, such as methylation extractor for Bismarck and meth ratio for BSMAP or GOBI for GSNAP and um, get the methylation ratio of individual cytosines. So you can actually use these, um, use this methylation ratio to carry out your downstream um, analysis. Or you can also go ahead and um, identify regions that are consistently differentially methylated between samples. So, so there will be, um, in terms of RNA-seq, this will be um, differential expression. Um, in methylation, it's called differentially methylated regions, also known as DMRs. 
and you can also visualize um, which regions are there it is on the genome um, by loading it on genome browsers um, and uh, get the files that are necessary to do this using tools that I'm going to describe today, which is called Biscuit and Z to Biscuit. So before I go into the actual pipeline, I'd like to discuss some of the benefits there are in carrying out your analysis um, on Cyber's discovery environment. So you can run your pipeline on a high-performance computing environment. So this means that um, your, the code will be optimized for the largest open access supercomputer located at TAC here. And you can store and share your data um, uh, between collaborators and also uh, any codes you have. And for the interest of discovery environment, we provide a very easy to use uh, user interface. Um, and apart from discovery environment, we also provide virtual machines and image analysis portal. And you can run your own pipeline and publish them just like the tools that I'm going to um, discussed today. And um, if you haven't already, you can register at the following URL. The first pipeline I'm going to discuss today um, is called Z-Align, which has BS map um, on its backend for mapping um, by sulfide reads. So you can access the discovery environment um, on the following URL and log in with your cybers credentials. As I said before, if you haven't already, you can register and get your account in probably a couple of days or on the same day. And the interface for um, discovery environment looks like this. So there's two, three tabs, data apps and analysis. You can go to the apps tab and search for Z-Align or any apps that you're interested in running. So for today, we are going to search for Z-Align. So here it is. So all the apps in discovery environment looks mostly the same. Um, you want to first name your analysis to suit your experiment type and um, put in your input files. So um, the first input file you need is genome sequence file in a FASTA format, which can be in your own data store, or Cyverse actually provides um, a collection of 200, um, over 200 genome sequences. So you want to go to latest builds and search for your species that you're interested in. As you can see, there are quite many. So for today, we want to look at maize. So it's called the maize. And you can see there's genome faster file here. And the other inputs required are the FASTQ file, which is the sequencing leads, which would be um, mostly in your data store, or you can, you can have um, shared um, directory with these files. So um, this would be this um, FASTQ file and the pair of um, So the parameters for um, Z-Align is the same as for BS, running BSMAP. We've added two additional parameters in which first one is the window size, which um, is used to calculate the average methylation ratio across these windows. And also um, the default is already given. And if you want to know more about individual parameters, you can click on the eye icon on the right to know, have more description of the individual um, parameters. 
the last one is actually chromosome to use for checking by sulfide conversion ratio. So for plants, you can use um, chloroplast genome, since this is a method. After you are done, you can launch the analysis and the outside. After you launch the job, um, you get a notification that the job is successfully launched. And you also get an email notification when the job is complete. And you can run, uh, you can look at the output files you get in your own data store, which would be um, normally under analysis folder. So as a sample data set, I've created um, outputs for Arabidopsis. And these are the four outputs you get. The first uh, output that I'm going to show is the mass ratio.txt file, which is important as it's used for running Z to biscuit, uh, which I'm going to explain later on. So this has in the information of all cytosines across the genome and its methylation context and methylation percentages. And the .yaml file has all the information about your run. So this includes all the settings you have used and the information about the input files and um, the conversion rate that um, you chose to calculate. And you can um, download bed graphs um, within the DE and use simple download to download these files onto your workstation. This, these are typically quite small uh, files, so you can use simple download and load it on um, genome browsers such as um, IDV, which is developed by Brock Institute. So I'm going to load um, Arbidopsis genome. and load the files that I just downloaded. So these have information about um, how Arbidopsis is methylated, um, and it has all three um, methylation contexts. So each peak actually represents um, not the individual cytosines, but the 100 base pair windows that we have set um, in data line run. And that completes um, the first pipeline, which describes data line. So the next pipeline I'm going to describe is called biscuit or z biscuit. The pipelines um, are essentially the same between these two. Um, the only difference between these two are the input files. So as the name suggests, um, Biscuit uses Bismarck output as its input, and Z to Biscuit um, uses the Z aligned output. Um, so the first stage of the pipeline actually um, converts these um, outputs from the align aligners and um, generate uh, input that can be fed onto MethylKit. MethylKit is an R package which generates cytosines. Um, and methylation, differential method, differentially methylated cytosines. So it does a comparison between two samples. And then the output from metal kit is fed onto EDMR, um, which generates differentially methylated regions. Um, the, these two are R packages. However, we have implemented them onto Python using RPy2 package so that we can actually um, run these pipelines threaded so it has a fa faster run speed than running um, it on R. And um, at, for the last step, we use a small Python script to generate backgrounds for visualization on genome browsers. So. I'm going to start the analysis for biscuit and set to biscuit. 
So the outline, as I've explained before, is the same for all the apps. The input for Biscuit is the um, output from Bismarck methylation extractor. So this is strand-specific cytosine uh, methylation context. Um, and it's a standard output from Bismarck methylation extractor, which is also available on Cybers. And Zhen Yuan um, is going to talk about this. So we have these files from two samples, since this is a comparative analysis. And also, you need the genome um, sequence in faster format which can be in that data store or any of, um, in the shared um, directory that I've shown before. So the parameters for biscuit or Z to biscuit uh, is simply the names of two sa of the samples and the context that you want to look at. So we know that plants have three different contexts of methylation. So you want to define which context that you are interested in. And defaults are already has been already set for p value and mean methylation difference between samples. And you simply launch the job. And Z to biscuit is much like um, biscuit. The only difference I as I've explained before is the input where we use Z align output, so math ratio.txt as an input for two samples and the genome um, classifier. And you want to keep the versions of genome the same um, as the one that you have used to map the sequences. Since for um, maize especially, the coordinates can be quite uh, different between two versions. And you launch the ana analysis and wait for it to compete. And like before, you get notification that the job is submitted. So these are the typical output files that's generated from biscuit or Z to biscuit. The types are the same between two um, pipelines. The first file I'm going to show is the dmr.txt which has information about all the DMRs that's been generated from these, in this pipeline. So it has the coordinates and mean methylation differences. The next file I'm going to show is the methylation stat.pdf, which has information about um, how individual cytogenes across these samples have been uh, methylated. So it has a nice histogram of what's the methylation percentage of all the cytokines. The next uh, file I'm going to show is generated by, by EDMR called bimodal distribution.png um, and cost function, which is actually used by EDMR to generate, um, to calculate gaps between cytokines to cluster cytosines to a region. Um, and if you want to know more about it, there's information on the Git, GitHub webpage. And we also provide a histogram of all the width of the DMRs that's been generated. So you can see there's a couple of large DMRs. And like Z-Align, um, it generates a nice bed graph, which you can um, do it on your genome browser. So you can download the bed graph um, with a simple download. and load the IGP browser and load in maze genome 
this this is maze data. And loading your DMR um, bed graph. So the individual peaks actually represent individual um, DMRs. And the height of um, DMRs represent mean methylation difference between the samples. And the positive peaks represent um, DMRs that's enriched in sample one. And the negative ones represent DMRs that's enriched in sample two. So um, that concludes my part of the webinar. And I'd like to mention that if you want to know more about these pipelines or have them in a paper format, you can um, look at the paper, which is in press in current protocols in plant biology, and get more information. Thank you. And now I'll pass on to Ben Wang, who's going to talk about this. Thank you so much, John. Uh, if there are any questions for John, please go ahead and type in the chat box, and uh, she will try to answer as many as she can uh, in the next five minutes or so. We'll pause here for a minute or so for the participants to give some time to type in their questions. Okay, it seems that there are no questions for John, so um, let's move on. So the next speaker is Junyuan Lu. Uh, Junyuan is a computational scientific developer in Dorin's lab at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. Uh, he has vast experience working on human HapMap projects. Currently, he's working on various um, hydroboard sequencing projects, such as uh, maize genome sequencing projects, sorghum, and Arabidopsis. So he's going to talk about Bismarck. Hi, uh, uh, I, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, Bismarck, which is a very popular um, uh, bisulfate uh, sequencing analysis tools. Uh, we integrated the, the Bismarck into our uh, cyber uh, discovery environment. So Bismarck, uh, including three parts, uh, the, the genome preparation, Bismarck, and the, the methylation extractor. Genome preparation part is to uh, convert your reference genome and then in, in, uh, do the indexing uh, and uh, prepare the uh, genome for the uh, mapping. The Bismarck uh, is doing the mapping of the bisulfide sequencing into the prepared genome and then uh, make the methylation uh, call of the uh, cytosine has been mapped. And then the methylation extractor is extracting the, uh, the result from the Bismarck uh, output and then generate um, various uh, report uh, uh, according users' needs. Next slide. So here is the what 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 you will see uh, when you launch the Bismarck genome preparation apps in DE. So uh, it, it has very simple input. Just need your uh, uh, a directory contain your reference genome, uh, or you can have a file tar zipped or, 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 uh, of that folder. And then uh, we also uh, provide a uh, uh, option let you to uh, also tar zip your output. 
Uh, next slide. Uh, so here is the uh, interface to running Bismarck uh, app in DE. So it will need the, uh, the prepare the uh, reference genome uh, 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 from the last step, from the genome preparation step. And then uh, it can do both uh, single end and parent end uh, 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 reads. So you need to put this, if just a single end, then you put in FASI uh, file one. If you have the uh, pair end, then you put the, the, the second reads into the FASQ file two. So we also uh, um, uh, uh, provided them uh, the most popular and uh, uh, used uh, um, uh, parameter, but not all the parameter uh, 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 in Bismarck. So uh, uh, important thing is here is that you need to uh, uh, to provide whether how is your uh, sequencing library is constructed, whether it's a directional or non-directional. And then also you need to provide a quality score type. Uh, I think these two are the most important ones. Uh, ne next step, uh, slide. Uh, the Bismarck uh, extractor interface is uh, shown here. So you will uh, get, uh, you, uh, use the, uh, the output from the Bismarck step, which is a BAM file containing the mapped information and the, 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 the methylation call. And then if you need also, you would like to generate a, a whole genome um, cytosine report, then you will also need to provide your uh, uh, reference genome here and then also in the parameter part we uh, provide them um, most popular or use the parameter but not all the uh, uh, parameters provided by uh, methylation extractor um, uh, co co command line tools so uh, you, you will need to uh, 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 select whether it's a pair end reads or single end reads and then uh, uh, by default, it will provide the uh, strength specific uh, uh, output, uh, which can be used in, in, in the tools mentioned by Joang. And then if you don't, uh, if you don't want that, you, you can uh, to merge them, it will be a smaller file to, to merge them into a, a, a context dependent uh, output file. And then if you also need the bad graph, uh, output to uh, view those uh, cycles in, in uh, genome browser. You can also uh, check here to generate the uh, bad graph output, and then you can also generate the gen uh, a report of the genome-wide cycles in, and then you can also check the that option. Uh, that option will uh, make the um, uh, the computational uh, uh, long because it's going to uh, uh, take some time to do that. And then uh, by default, you you it only have CPG. So, but you can uh, so CHH uh, C, CHG uh, sometimes is combined. So, if, if you want to also use the CHG and CHH, you you need also to uh, to check the box in 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 front of the including CHG and CHH uh, uh, parameter there. So, uh, next slide. Yeah, I I think the, this is the end of uh, my introduction of the Bismarck uh, tools in DE. So uh, if, if you have any, any question, uh, I, 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 I would like to uh, answer here. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, if there are any questions for Daniel, uh, please go ahead and type in the chat box. And again, we will pause for a minute so you guys can type in your questions.
Okay, it seems that there are no questions so far. So uh, the final speaker for today's webinar is Rosa uh, Bartelson. Uh, Rosa is a science analyst at uh, Cybers. He has a background experience working in mammalians, especially human cell biology and physiology. Uh, he also studied plants and anti-infection drug development before he decided to uh, get into genomics and transcriptomics. Uh, Rosa is very experienced, uh, working in many different types of bioinformatics studies. Uh, at Cybers, he mainly focuses on building apps and also teaches uh, users how to best use uh, Cybers infrastructure. Rosa. Okay, thanks, Apendra. And uh, thanks, Chuan and Chenwan also. Um, as you've seen, uh, the alignment step is an important step in the analysis of bisulfite sequencing. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit today about GSNAP. It's uh, in many ways just an, an, another alignment tool. It's a fairly fast aligner. Um, and it's integrated into the discovery environment. Um, and, uh, it actually runs on an HPC server uh, attack, uh, a rather fast server, has uh, uh, a lot of cores available for threading. Um, and it takes as an input uh, a folder of your read sequences or your uh, sequence files and will fairly automatically go through, identify your files by the .fq and .fq fastq terminators um, look looks for pairing although i think you're you're given a chance also to tell it that it's dealing with paired files if that's the case um, and then it, it will will uh, index your genome uh, and and then run the mapping uh, with gsnap uh, it has a SAM file output, which can readily be converted to BAM file, which is uh, part of the typical analysis pipeline for bisulfide sequencing. Um, um, next slide. Um, so, okay, um, I guess let's go back. I, I thought I had another slide in there, but um, the, uh, the importance of GSNAP as an aligner for bisulfide sequencing is simply that uh, it allows for uh, especially sensitive mapping. Um, bisulfide sequencing necessarily modifies the uh, sequence of the or the uh, the residues within the DNA, and you're when you're mapping against a reference, the any changes with respect to the reference can decrease the sensitivity of mapping. So um, uh, GSNAP can mitigate that problem by uh, including in the index versions of the reference that uh, include the uh, modifications that you might see. So um, it, that gives it an added level of sensitivity for mapping to see more from your data. But it also includes uh, the capability of using sequence variants. So for example, if the uh, system that you're studying is not a, uh, a complete match for the uh, reference sequence that you're using. Uh, and that's the case with human studies uh, uh, commonly, uh, but, um, but it, it, more importantly in this case, uh, if you're dealing with uh, mice, for example, and you have a specific strain of mice and your reference isn't the exact same strain, then you could, uh, take advantage of the ability of GSNAP to include uh, in its index uh, some of the sequence variations that are, uh, come along with your specific strain. And that, again, inc increases the sensitivity 
improves the overall mapping of uh, your reads against the reference and gives you a more complete picture of what's going on. And that's, and that's all there is to it as far as using GSNAP for bisulfide sequencing. It essentially gives you a more sensitive uh, way of mapping and it's a fast mapper. So it gives you an, another option uh, to, uh, to use for this kind of study. Uh, so now we'll go on to the next slide. And uh, GSNAP is also interesting uh, for an entirely different type of epigenetic study. For those who may be interested in adenosine to inosine modifications of pre-messenger RNA, although uh, apparently it's also uh, known to modify pre-micro RNAs. And the modifications can uh, affect the uh, eventual expression of these particular forms within uh, the cells that where the activity is found. Um, and it's, uh, in this case, the adenosine to inosine modification uh, can, can cause unwinding of uh, RNA, which in this case, uh, where you're going to see the modification, it's going to be double-stranded RNA. Uh, again, this, these are uh, preliminary forms of RNA that uh, occur in the nucleus. So there, uh, you sometimes get a loopback structure, uh, especially, uh, for example, at the three prime untranslated region, but it also can include introns and sometimes even the five prime untranslated region. And uh, when, uh, and especially found around ALU's uh, repeats type sequences. Um, and this was originally uh, commonly found mostly in humans and primates, but in closer study, it's generally been found in animals, in the animal kingdom, but not in plants so far not in protists or in bacteria, of course. Uh, so uh, it's an interesting phenomenon, but it's not uh, just of academic interest, it's a, a special interest uh, for those who are studying uh, autoimmune diseases uh, like MS. So um, uh, GSNAP in this case provides again the capability of more uh, in a more sensitive manner, being able to recognize these modified sequences, because adenosine to inosine shifts uh, read in sequencing as an adenosine to guanosine change. Uh, so, uh, in looking for this modification, uh, you may want to focus especially on nuclear species of uh, messenger RNA of the pre messenger RNA especially, but also uh, looking for uh, A to G shifts or T to C shifts, uh, depending on which uh, strand you ultimately are sequencing. So uh, GSAP enables you to include in your, uh, uh, in your mapping or in your index for your mapping the uh, uh, potential adenosine to inosine modifications to boost the sensitivity. And, and so that's a, a, an important consideration if you're interested in this type of study. Uh, and I think there's one more slide. Uh, yes, and this slide just shows that in the parameter section for uh, running GSNAP, um, there's a place where you can select uh, uh, C methylation, that is, you turn it, it's uh, normally set to C methylation mapping off. If you're uh, including indexing for C methyl uh, groups um, and, and that kind of modification, then you can just turn on C methylation mapping. Um, similarly, you can do uh, a, a change from adenosine to 
inosine sensitive mapping to from off to on. So, um, so GSNAP has this capability. Again, it's a fairly fast mapper, and uh, and it's uh, a commonly used one for studying variants. So uh, it, you can look at vari variations in sequence and also variations in epigenetic modifications at the same time. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I need to say about GSNAP uh, at this time. Um, and if there are any questions or... Uh, Thank you, Rosa. Uh, yes, please go ahead and type in your questions because uh, this is the end of the webinar. And we will uh, pause again here for a few minutes uh, for you guys to type in your questions. And then we have enough time uh, to answer all of your questions. So please go ahead and type in your questions. Okay, so it seems that there are no questions. So um, I think that's the end of the webinar. So thank you again, guys, for uh, joining us for today's webinar. Please do join again for next week's um, part two of the epigenetic seminar, where some of these speakers again will join and show you uh, some of those results, uh, as well as Black Joyce from uh, Cybers will show you how to do the epigenetic analysis in COSI, which is uh, infrastructure powered by Cybers. And as a reminder, uh, you will get an email within the next 24 hours or so um, indicating the links for next week's seminar, um, next week webinar, as well as the YouTube links, as well as the materials where you can download for this webinar. Thank you so much and have a nice day, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye.